So today we're going to learn about how we can encrypt or hash and then verify a password using passlib and Python. Now this is going to be a very important concept when you're trying to build websites or any other program which requires some user authentication. This also helps you protect the password even from the developers as you're going to be encrypting the password into a hash and then storing it into your database. Now we're just mainly going to talk about the syntax involved in creating a hash and then verifying it. Now the first step for us is to install passlib and this can be done very easily on the terminal by typing pip3 install passlib. Now for some of you, you might have to use pip install passlib in case you just have one Python installation. Now, once you've done that, all you gotta do is import and for this we're gonna do from passlib.hash, uh, we're gonna import now this, what you see here called pbkdf2 underscore hsa256 is just one of the algorithms using which we can do uh, password hashing. Now there are many others and you can look into the passlib documentation to find it. Uh, as technology keeps getting more and more complex, the new hashing algorithms keep coming up. So now our import has gone through successfully because I already had this installed. The first step for us is to learn the syntax of how to create a hash. Now let's say we have someone's password and it is equal to, for now, for the sake of convenience, hello123. So I make a variable called hello123 and if I wanted to create a hash out of this in my program, I would just use a variable called hash. I'm gonna say, pb and this is what I just imported so pbkdf2 underscore sha 256 parentheses and uh, sorry dot hash and parentheses and I'm going to put in password now this is the simple syntax for you to learn at first but ideally for more security you should be using what is called a password salt along with this we'll learn that in a later video for now we'll keep it simple and this, you can print this out, this creates a hash and you can see it's a long line with a lot of characters and it's something that performs multiple iterations and computations on it to get to this. Now it's not possible for you to get back the original string out of this and this is why they're very safe. What you can do is you can take another string, you can encrypt it and or make it into a hash and then see whether they match so in order to do that we have to learn how to verify a hash and it works pretty much the same way now let's say we can we want to check out two possibilities one where the hash matches and one where it doesn't so now we'll make a variable called entered password and first we will set it to just some random let's say anything now we want to verify whether the hash matches our current hash. So we'll again do pbkdf2 underscore sha256 dot verify. And here we provide the original, we provide the new entered password. And we provide the original hash, which ideally we would get from a database when we're building an application. And we can check to see whether it works might have got a small spelling mistake over here p b k d f okay that should work and it says false because the hash was not verified now if i were to change the entered password back to the original correct password which is hello one two three now, when I try to verify password, it should say true. And you can see now it says true. And this can be the logic that we use in order to successfully authenticate a user on a website or any other application. Now, 
You can take a look at this example that we have over here of a simple program where we ask the user to input their email and password and store the hash into the database, in this case, just a simple dictionary. In the next program, we're going to try to use this dictionary as a database and we'll ask the user to enter their email and password again, but this time we will verify to see whether the password that was added is actually going to be correct. So there are other such algorithms as well and you can take a look at it on the Passlib website. It's constantly updated and newer algorithms are constantly added to Passlib. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned to Young Wong's for more content.